Five years have passed since the British under Cornwallis surrendered to General Washington at Yorktown to end the War for Independence. A convention is held at Annapolis, Maryland to discuss the problems of the new republic. Out of this convention comes the decision to hold further meetings to consider revising the Articles of Confederation. In May 1787, at a convention held in Philadelphia, it's decided to draw up an entirely new constitution. By late September, the new constitution is ready. This document, which calls for a strong central government while protecting the rights of the individual states, is conceived to provide for the common defense, ensure domestic tranquility, and secure the blessings of liberty. The little state of Delaware is the first to meet in convention to consider the ratification of the new constitution. The eyes of the nation are focused on Delaware. Well, Bob, there'll be plenty for you to write about today. I'm wondering, Mr. Latimer, what will happen? Do you think, sir, that they will ratify today? Bob, so few of us ever really know when we're on the brink of a great historical event. Here we are, you, Robert Corum, teacher and writer for the Delaware Gazette, and I, James Latimer, president of one of the most important conventions ever assembled in our state. We can look back upon uncertainty, and we can look forward also with uncertainty. But this new constitution does promise security for the state and nation. Promise? Yes. But it depends upon the intentions of men. A great deal has been written about this constitution, for and against it. Do you have any doubts, Mr. Latimer, about the outcome of today's meeting? Not really. George Reed has seen to it that we have the votes necessary for ratification, but it must be unanimous if we are to impress the nation. Unanimous? Did you ever see the three counties agree unanimously on anything? I'm depending a great deal on the influence of George Reed of Newcastle. George Reed, sir, may have organized the votes in this convention, but he hasn't even made an appearance here. Neither is John Dickinson. But would you say that Dickinson's work has all been for nothing? He is the one we really have to thank for the way things stand today. I was thinking just today of how he had presided over the convention in Annapolis and how he could have insisted upon shoring up the Articles of Confederation, which he practically wrote himself. Will this new constitution guarantee us freedom of the press, religion, the right of assembly, and all the other rights for which we fought the war? We have those rights assured us in our state constitution, but I feel sure that eventually amendments to the federal constitution will restate our great freedoms. I would like to have seen compulsory public education in the new constitution. Patience, Quorum. You teachers and writers can be so impatient. Believe me, this new constitution is not a perfect document. But as Benjamin Franklin said in Philadelphia, it is the best and finest that any group of men could have written at any one time. This is the rock on which our federal nation will be built. And with God's help, it will survive the storms that are ahead of us. final meeting of our four-day convention. But before we enter on to the momentous business in front of us, I feel we should ask the guidance of Almighty God. Will the Reverend Chaplain lead us in prayer? O oh, Almighty God, who has given us this good land for our heritage, be with us, we beseech thee, in this momentous hour. By the light of thy Holy Spirit, give us a right understanding in the matter that is before us, and the wisdom to decide wisely for the benefit of all thy people. And to thee be the praise, the glory, and the might now and forever. Amen. Gentlemen, we are 
assembled here from all parts of the state. There are many of us who have not always seen eye to eye on the great problems of our nation and state. But despite our differences, <coughs> we are united in one great hope that we will survive and develop as a state and a nation. Before we enter into the final business of the convention, it is proper that we hear from His Excellency, the President of the Delaware State. I will ask Colonel Alan McLean and Mr. Richard Bassett to escort His Excellency to the rostrum. His Excellency, the President of the Delaware State, the Honorable Thomas Collins. Thank you. Gentlemen of the Convention, it gives me great pleasure as President of the Delaware State to greet you and to wish you well in the great deliberations which lie ahead of you. It is only fitting, I believe, that I should outline the events which have led to your assembling here. As president of the Delaware State, I received a copy of the new Constitution from Charles Thompson, Secretary of the Congress, and I immediately presented it to the assembly as a subject for the most important consideration. The assembly agreed and adopted a resolution setting November 26 of this year for the election of delegates to this convention. These elections were carried out peaceably in Newcastle and Kent counties, but I regret to say that there was some trouble in Sussex County, even though the voting place for that county was moved from Lewis to Vaughan's Furnace, just to avoid such disorders. However, we are all, I believe, happy to learn that both slates of candidates were pledged to ratify this Constitution. I think that you are all agreed on the need for a new Constitution which will establish a more perfect union, provide for the common welfare, and promote domestic tranquility. I believe that the Constitution which Mr. Dickinson, Mr. Reed, Mr. Bassett, Mr. Bedford, and Mr. Broom did so much to cause to take its present form, will give the answers to those problems and will provide the basis upon which we can build a strong, united, and at the same time, superlatively free nation.